In this video, we will talk about arguments. This is the first video in a series introducing symbolic logic. Whenever you make a claim, it's possible that someone will disagree with you. There are a couple of ways to resolve a disagreement. You can yell, you can fight, or you can get into an argument. When you yell or you fight, the point is to eliminate your opponent, either by drowning them out or beating them into oblivion. But when you argue, the point is to support your belief with reasons for thinking that it's true. The idea is that if you have good reasons for holding your belief, then others should be able to inspect those reasons to evaluate the truth of your claims. If your claims stand up to scrutiny, then others have good reason to agree with you, thus ending disagreement in consensus instead of violence. This process of exchanging reasons through argument is called rationality, and it's part of what makes us human. The point is that an argument gives reasons for thinking a belief is true. This is important because sometimes our beliefs are false, and without openly exchanging and inspecting our reasons, we're liable to make serious mistakes. Saying that some beliefs are false tends to make people nervous, so just to be clear, I'll distinguish between two kinds of beliefs that everyone has. One I'll call opinions, and the other I'll call propositions. Opinions are statements of preference or taste, for instance, that blue is the most beautiful color, or that cookie is the best of the monsters. It is strange to say that sentences like these are true or false, since people like so many different colors and monsters. To say that an opinion is neither true nor false is really to say that there's no argument you can give to change someone's taste. A person's preferences aren't sensitive to reasons in this way. That's just to say that opinions are not rational. That doesn't mean that they're bad or that you shouldn't have them. It just means that they're the kind of things that can't be supported by an argument. So arguing over opinions is a complete waste of time. On the other hand, propositions are statements with definite truth values ones that can be inspected and verified by anyone willing to look. It's not up to my preference whether Mary Poppins wears army boots, because there are facts that settle the matter, regardless of what my opinions are. Or I might have thought that hummus was made from gerbil vomit, but when I do the research and discover that hummus is made from chickpeas, I've discovered the truth of a proposition. This research should convince anyone else of the same. No matter what we thought before, discovering the truth gives us good reason for changing our beliefs. If arguments can demonstrate the truth of propositions, argument might give us good reason for changing our beliefs too. Okay, so let's say we accept this radical idea that some beliefs are true and others are false, and that arguments can prove which is which. So how do they do it? How do arguments work? Let's appeal to a trusted authority. An argument is a collected series of statements to establish a definite proposition. In the words we've been using, that's just to say that an argument gives reasons for thinking a proposition is true. Let's look at an example. Let's say that you know that koalas are vertebrates, I told you that all vertebrates yawn. Together, these propositions give good reason to draw the obvious conclusion that koalas yawn. We call those reasons premises, and they provide an argument for the conclusion, which is the proposition demonstrated to be true. The premises are true. It entails the truth about koalas, which you can discover by logically analyzing the other things you know. Logic is the science of arguments. One class of arguments are called inductive arguments, where the premises give reasons for thinking that a conclusion is likely to be true. This class of arguments are especially important to science, where nearly all the conclusions are generated through some kind of inductive reasoning. But there's a special class called deductive arguments, where the premises guarantee the truth of the conclusion. That is, if the premises are true, the conclusion isn't just likely or probable, but it's necessarily true. This kind of necessity is something you don't really see anywhere else in science outside of mathematics. Deductive logic is really just math with words. Let me show you what I mean. Take the argument about koalas, the argument doesn't really have much to do with koalas. You show that by swapping out every occurrence of koala in the argument with lizards, fish, birds, and other animals, each time generating new propositions. No matter what terms we substitute in, the conclusion will always be guaranteed by the truth of the premises. This structural relation among true propositions can reliably generate new knowledge, no matter what terms we include. So what really matters here is the form of the argument. Aristotle discovered this argument form 2,000 years ago and called the form valid. If the premises are true, it will reliably generate true conclusions, and that's how a good argument works. In this video, we discovered how arguments can resolve disagreements by providing reasons for thinking a belief is true. We also said that logic is the science of arguments, which generates new knowledge by studying the relations between our beliefs. Next time, we'll look at some of the syllogistic forms that Aristotle uses and what makes them valid.